This powertrain is going to be replacing the one that's inside the Highlander right now. And I had to take it out of a donor vehicle. To get it out, of course I had to take the axles out, but you can see that wasn't possible on this one. Or at least I gave it about 15 minutes of <laughs> really good tries and I couldn't get it out. So what I did is I just split this axle apart. I pulled it out of the tulip and left that tulip inside the transmission where I could deal with it once it was out on the floor. Well now it's on the floor and I've tried a lot of different methods. I used an axle popper. I've used my big pry bar. I've even tried a hammer and some chisels to try and get this tulip out of that transmission and it just won't budge. And then a two jaw puller hooked to this slide hammer. Remember, it's only a stupid idea if it doesn't work. I think you get the idea here. So today I'll show you a step-by-step -step of what I'm going to do to get that done and I'll explain why it would be easier for just a regular front-wheel drive car. Let's go. I hope those examples give you kind of an idea of how stuck this thing is. Today we're going to be taking this apart. It's going to be more of an autopsy really than a how-to video on removing an axle. This is the most stuck that I've ever seen. So I'm going to say that it's like a one in a thousand kind of a deal here. I guess what I'm doing here is just separating this differential from the transmission and you'll be able to see the other side of that axle shaft as it comes through this way. So the idea with a front wheel drive car would be remove the opposite axle and come in from that side with a chisel and hammer the axle out that you're having a problem with. Usually it's easier to push it out than it is to pull it. Once I get this differential off here, you're gonna see why it's gonna be a little bit more difficult with this particular transaxle. You'll be able to see it in just a second here. I'm probably gonna have to take the entire transmission apart just to get down in there to see what's going on. So there's usually two causes, I think, to having these axles stuck in there. Number one is rust. Somehow rust can get into there. Maybe there was some water intrusion or something like that. And the inner race of that bearing that the shaft goes through or the shaft itself starts rusting and that kind of rust welds everything together. So that would be a regular seized axle. Or there could be the clip on the other end of that axle that holds it in there could be a little bit too big for the groove and hammering it in was maybe a little bit more difficult than normal and hammering it out almost impossible. go. All right, let's have a closer look here. Let's go deep down inside there. You see that nearly vertical pin right there? Now usually you can go around a pin like that. Imagine a forked tool that you could go around that and hit the shaft on the other side of it. But then you've also got these other two pins that are obstructing that as well. Those two pins form a cross Behind that cross, that's the axle shaft. When I'm using a swivel socket, like this one here, I like to use a locking extension because you can see how off center that gets and it can fly off. With the locking extension, it's not coming off. You have to pull down on this collar and then it comes off. I don't know if this RTV is going to crack off. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, it looks like it came off. Leaking a lot of transmission fluid down here on the bench, but that's okay. It's metal. That's why I like this bench so much. Okay, 
There's the bell housing. I think what I'm gonna do is just carefully remove this entire differential so I can get a better look at it. In order for me to do that, this tulip isn't gonna fit through the hole on the case, so that's gonna have to get cut off. Whenever I do a lot of cutting, I like to cover up to keep myself clean and uh, to keep myself from getting burned, especially on top of my head. All right, let's have a look. So have a look inside this case here before I put it down. This is the bearing race for that differential. You can see a lot of scarring. I can feel it with my finger also. Have a look inside here. And that's what we've been looking for here. This is the axle shaft coming through there. It's got these marks on it. That looks like it got pushed through and hit right here on those pins that hold in the spider gears as it was pushed in too far. You can see the damage on it there. I think that may have come from the last moments of its life. Now this car, it came from, the donor, was a rollover and it rolled in the Y direction. So passenger door to passenger door this way. I think what may have happened is the, this is the driver's side. That driver's side tire came and hit the ground at an angle there. It may have pushed that axle in too far. That's an engine mount that got broken. and the driver's side. See that there? That's the ball joint and it got bent pretty bad. And here's what happened to the rear axle. This damage here, sort of a wavy damage where it hit that pin from the spider gears. That's not just damage going into the metal, but it peened it over. So if you look real close, this side of the axle shaft right there is peened over just enough to where it's bigger than the inside diameter of this gear. So what I'm gonna try and do is fix this end of the axle so it'll just go right back through. It's gonna have to get hammered out. As long as I can fix this part of the axle and get it back to a round shape, I think I can do it. All right, let's go check this out. I think I did a pretty good job here. A lot of those splines have been removed and I just, made this diameter a little bit smaller. I'll cut the end of this axle off here and then push the axle in all the way through the other side of the differential. That's where the splines on that axle shaft are. Still not coming out. It's kind of frustrating, but we're getting really close now. I think the bigger problem now is this groove inside the axle is pinching that clip and it can't come out. I'm gonna take a chisel and see if I can open that up a little bit. All right, so that groove is still kind of tight right here. It's just grabbing onto the end of this clip. Let's see if I can wiggle, there we go. That's it. That's all that was holding it in. Well, why not? One more cut ought to do it. I'm gonna cut the end off of it here because what else could it possibly be, right? Moment of truth. Oh yeah, that's it, we got her. So it was a bit of a complex problem. Not only was the end of the axle mushroomed out slightly so it couldn't fit through the hole here, it was also peened over just a little bit, about a one degree or so, so that those splines no longer lined up. 
and it also pinched this clip inside of its groove. Well, that's a pretty interesting problem, but I'm glad I did this teardown today because I learned something, and that's that you should be careful of a collision vehicle because you're not sure of what kind of internal damage you're gonna have until you tear it apart. Now, if you wanna see my two favorite ways of removing an axle from a transmission that isn't damaged, you can click right over here and see how it's done the easy way.